Pat from Dead Things. So I was on the Shadow Palms chat last night and Raman Thittal and Joy Zagal, Mike and Sharon were asking about pneumatics. And, uh, and so I'm going to uh, give a little uh, tutorial on pneumatics. Um, my uh, experience with pneumatics is not as extensive as some uh, and I'm sure that some can speak with more authority on it. Uh, Dave from Pandemic Cemetery comes to mind right off the bat. But I want to just share this, uh, what I've learned um, in my excursions into pneumatics. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to do this. I, I thought I might just be able to do it all at once, but I think what I need to do is to break it down into three sections. Um, air compressors, solenoids, air cylinders, and how the three of them interact. So maybe before. So we're going to start with air compressors. Uh, these are the typical type of air compressors that you get at you know Walmart or uh, or some of the other other places around. Very small. They're one gallon air compressors. They're called oilless air compressors um, because they well they don't have oil, um, and they will work fine for if you have one or two small props, a trash can trauma. Uh, something like that. As soon as you get kind of beyond two pneumatic props with these guys, uh, they'll just be, they'll be running all night. Air pneumatics consumes a lot of air because it is not a closed system. Air that is used to drive a cylinder when it is when it is exhausted it is lost to the atmosphere so these things have to recharge up the their air and they will run all night um, so this is what I run which is a little larger this is about a five gallon air compressor and it is an oil air compressor um, didn't choose it but it just seems to be that the larger ones usually are oil which means that basically they come with oil and you have to keep an eye on the oil reservoir down there and fill them with oil from time to time. They don't consume a lot of oil. I mean, I don't use mine much more than, you know, the odd power tool. Its main use comes on, on Halloween night. So, uh, so that's it. So basically, uh, one interesting thing about these is that they cannot be run off of an extension cord. They have to be plugged directly into a wall socket. I don't know why that is. I think it has to do something with current draw. If there's, if the current draw um, is not enough, it it wrecks the, the motor, basically. And I think this is how I killed these two guys. Um, I was using them to blow out my air sprinklers and uh, I thought it was actually the the workload that I was doing to them had they'd have to you know recharge with air and I thought that was it but I actually think it was because I was had them on uh, on uh, extension cords um, so food for thought don't run these things off of extension cords but consequently I didn't throw them out basically what I did is I just reworked them so that they have now become additional storage tanks for that guy. So I actually have now increased uh, storage capacity. I basically got about um, probably a little over seven gallons worth of uh, air out of this. So all of them will have two dials. One dial, this one, is the air pressure in the tank itself. This second dial will be the air pressure that you're sending out the hose. Um, that's important. You always want to use the least amount of air pressure possible in your props. You always want to start when you're testing your props to put the air pressure low and bring it up. Uh, trust me on that one. I almost watched my uh, my pneumatic groundbreaker tear itself apart because I was running it at a full 110 PSI. Absolutely almost destroyed it. Um, these things have a lot of force. Also because of that, 
my personal thing i do not let them be triggered by like a pir or something like that i have control of it. it's part of my haunt control i have a remote control that i use to actually trigger the prop that way i know if somebody's too close to it or has gotten into it or anything like that it won't fire unless i see them and fire it myself so that's just my own personal thing just because these things can be so powerful Basically, you're moving things in a straight line for the most part. You know, you can't get circular motion out of uh, out of pneumatics, but for the most part, you are moving things in a straight line. So you want to make sure safety, 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 kids. <clears throat> so how do I get the air from there into the solenoid? Well, basically, it's through a hose. These are the typical hoses that come with these units these curly wrapped up things curly wrapped up thing like that which are really of no bloody use to us as haunters other than being additional uh, you know length to uh, to get us to where we need to go so here are two cords that I've used or two hoses that I've used this is a rubber hose and as you can see it's it's relatively cool here tonight it's probably hovering just around freezing in the garage and uh, you can see that with this doesn't matter how I move it I can straighten it out for the most part and that this one is a PVC and don't matter what I do with that that is not uncoiling so typically what I do with this one this one runs from the garage to the uh, to the um, to the yard and then from the yard out I run these guys because then I can snake them around and and place them where I need them so how do you connect it all up <clears throat> basically these things have um, different types of connectors and I'll show you them That there is a female connector. It is what it is, people. And those there are male connectors. Okay, and you see this one has outer thread. This one has inner thread. Um, if you need to, say, connect something up, you've cut a cut a air hose and you need to you want to splice something in what you can do is you can get something like that nope. camera's doing some wonky things here let's see if i can just focus in on that something like that you can see that's a double so that's for uh joining two air hoses together but you can see this one here has uh threads and i've just basically threaded one of those onto it and then basically this gets inserted into the hose and you use a uh, uh, pipe clamp or hose clamp sorry to uh, clamp that onto into the hose these there's several different types of these I found out um, the most common at least the most common up here is called M style Ooh, hey, look at me. The most common up here is called M style. There's also N style and A style, and I believe there's another one. I think it's maybe called P style. But basically, um, these guys I've been able to buy in packages where you get a couple of those and about 10 of these assorted of these right and they've always been M style so I'm thinking M style is probably the most common so anytime that you're using something like this where it's being threaded onto something you want to use oh, and I probably have it in here you want to use something that's called Teflon tape and you can find that if 
if you if you have a pneumatics um, a, a store that sells pneumatics rams and that type of stuff you can find it in the pneumatic se section you can also find it um, in uh, plumbing sections as well and it's basically it's a white it's not even tape it's it's a ribbon and you wrap that around the threads a bunch of times usually in the direction that the thread goes and then what that helps to do is to create an airtight seal so that's uh that's important so just to kind of recap here you have your air compressor you have the hose to the air compressor that goes out from the air compressor. You have choices of a different t couple of types of hoses. And also, here's another one attachment. You can buy this like this. And so what this allows me to do is to run, obviously, three different hoses, or three different lines off of one hose. Uh, right now, I have three pneumatics that's going to be changing very quickly so I'm going to have to redo that I'll probably um, I might either just disassemble that and do it in a straight line manifold or I might just buy another one of those and and hook it up that way um, so basically with all this stuff you want one of these on one end of your hose one of those on the other end of the hose, right? Male one end, female on the other one, on the other end. And it, you always want, um, as you can see here, I'm plugging male into the female. So on this end would then be a female the male plugs into that and on that end would be a female with the male plugs into that so that compressors that will get you to the solenoid which is in our next episode